right, folks, thanks for coming. It's uh, April 11th. This is our first meeting in the month of April. Uh, please rise and pledge the flag with us. Roll call, please, Angela. Saba Al Zayed. Amy High. Here. James Fee. Here. Megan Nolan. Here. Diane Gundrum. Here. Tony Heil. Here. Al Shank. Here. And uh, Angela, for the record, Ms. Al Zayed uh, informed us she was on vacation. Mr. President, we were in executive session from approximately 7 o'clock to approximately 7.30 with regard to personnel issues as well as potential litigation. Thank you, Mr. Bellow. And uh, Mr. Truman, go ahead. Okay, good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming out. First up on the agenda for council consideration would be the adoption of the March 28th, 2023 meeting minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes. A second. Motions from Mr. Heil, second by Ms. Nolan to approve the March 28th meeting minutes. Questions or comments from the council or the public on the minutes? All right, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, that's unanimous, thank you. Okay, very good, thank you. Next up for council consideration would be to appoint, uh, make an appointment rather, to fill a vacancy on the Sustainability Advisory Committee. Members of council, in your packets, you should find a letter of interest from a Ms. Srina Patel. Um, expressing her interest in filling this vacancy. And if it pleases council, I would uh, recommend uh, appointing Ms. Patel to the Sustainability Committee. I'll make the motion to appoint Shrina to the Sustainability Committee. And I'll just like to say that she has been a friend of the committee and I um, am delighted to have her join the team. I'll second. We have a motion from Ms. Nolan, seconded by Ms. Gundrum, to appoint Trina Patel to the Sustainability Advisory Committee. Questions or comments from the public or from council or the public? And I'll second what everybody said about Ms. Patel being a fantastic addition to the committee. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that's unanimous, thank you. Next up for council consideration, ordinance 2023, or excuse me, 2023 2, executing a cable franchise agreement with Verizon. Um, as, uh, as we've discussed a couple times in the last uh, few meetings, uh, you know, we engaged a law firm, a telecom law firm uh, by the name of Cohen Law Group out of Pittsburgh. They specialize in negotiating these franchise agreements with uh, the big uh, cable provi providers like Verizon and Comcast. And um, adopting this ordinance would be the um, the uh, the fruition of uh, of that relationship. They've uh, negotiated another agreement with Verizon, and executing this ordinance would, uh, in turn, be uh, authorization to execute the agreement. I'll make a motion to approve the ordinance. Second. Motions from Mr. Heil, second by Ms. Nolan, to approve the ordinance regarding the agreement with Verizon. Questions or comments from council or the public? All right, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous, thank you. All right, thank you. And moving on for council consideration, a request from Growing Bridgeport Together uh, regarding the relocation of the Bridgeport River Market to Rotundo Riverfront Park, uh, as well as renewal of the license agreement between the borough and Growing Bridgeport together for the use of borough property. Um, Mr. Gundrum, if you'd like to step forward to the podium in, in the event any members of council have any questions, uh, members of council, I had, uh, had circulated via email a, uh, the request letter from uh, Mr. Gundrum and, and Growing Bridgeport together uh, over the weekend. And you know, if, if anybody has any questions, please uh, throw them Mr. Gundrum's way. 
I'm, I'm, I'm further, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, President Cheng. Mr. John, if, if you had any, you know, a synopsis of, of you know, the, the letter you'd like to give, that would be um, probably helpful for the record, too. Well, it's pretty much as has been in the past. Um, we typically have a banner placed at the location outside the uh, entrance. Um, we put advertising um, lawn signs out week before each event uh, to help draw people in. And we also um, usually utilize some picnic benches as well as um, some trash receptacles and all from the borough um, that has been in the past as well as um, road barricades, some traffic cones, and uh, I think that's it for that. Um, what's, the, what's the day you'll be doing it this year? Okay, so the difference this year, it's kind of like we're almost starting over, is um, we're gonna be changing it to Sunday, second and fourth Sundays, um, May through September from 10 a.m to 1 p.m. So it'll be a morning market. Therefore, the name change <laughs> in Bridgeport River Market. Twilight doesn't apply anymore. Um, so uh, we'll be doing that. And um, we're pretty much uh, hoping for good turnouts. I know in previous years, whatever was necessary as far as insurance riders, um, uh, um, Statements in the letter or the agreement about cleaning, th cleaning things up down there in case there's any trouble, that's all, that's all included? Yes. Yes. It is, President Schenk. Right. Um, the other would be road closure. So at Frosty Falls, uh, typically the road would be closed um, from... Not to Calp Street, it would be no, no, road going back to the boathouse. At Crow Creek, there's that bridge. So there's usually a uh, barricade that would be put up there. And then we have the other, like the cones are required for the other side because we, um, we've spoken with uh, Mr. Schilt about um, traveling through his property for the boathouse and for the vendors to get in and out of the market and to the boathouse on that morning so I just spoke with Rich on Friday about that so he's in agreement with that and um, he knows the dates and he will be informing his uh, renters and, and people who have, have you contacted the rowing the rowing team the rowing club just to let them know there'll be a, that change on Sundays with access we have to contact them um, and also, I found. And I guess out. I guess we're closing the road. We can do that too. Yeah, I was okay. going to say I can I can yeah. I can, I can facilitate that too if you need uh, if you need a contact. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, and I think that's it. And we're hoping with the Chester Valley Trail there, that construction was done. That you know we'll have a little more traction there as well as uh, Frosty Falls. We're partnering with them. Um, for this event as well. Well, I think it's a great change. I appreciate all the enthusiasm for the project as always, the excitement. Um, it's going to bring a lot of people to that area. So um, I don't think there's anything we need to go over because we talked about it already before. So um, we're good. Um, hey, Vice President Schenk, I, 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 or, uh, Heil, excuse me. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. That, a lot more money, <laughs> <probably>. <laughs> I, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know that there's any vote that needs to take place tonight. I, I think that you know. I I thought that you know both John and I thought it prudent to uh, to have Growing Bridgeport appear before uh, appear before council to to apprise them of the fact that they wish to relocate back to the riverfront. Uh, good for the the public to you know hear the announcement that the market is moving to the riverfront changing hour or changing uh, days of the week and uh if council is uh, is still all right with it and, and it seems like they would be um i'll i'll move forward with uh, with mr bellow and mr gundrum to get a new license agreement uh put together to uh, to reflect council's uh pleasure 
if it, as it were. So thank you. Right. What's what's not to like? I can't imagine any pushback on it. So we'll have that ready for April, and everything will be ready for May. You got some pretty good, uh, pretty good traction with vendors. Um, we could always use more. So we're we're still looking. So I mean, we got some seasonal, some for the whole season, and we got some others that are here and there. Um, so keep looking. Thank you, John. All right, thank you. Thanks, John. All right, moving forward for council consideration, a resolution 2023-10, authorizing application to the 2023 Community Development Block Grant Program. Uh, members of council, we uh, this is a grant that the borough uh, applies to uh, every year and receives a, uh, a grant award with you know, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty great frequency. Uh, the ceiling, uh, the, the maximum awarded amount you can receive is $200,000. That is typically what we request. Uh, for the 2023 block grant program uh, application, the grand total project uh, estimate, cost estimate is $370,000. So $200,000 would hopefully be funded through the block grant and the borough's local match would be $170,000. And um, the scope of the project would be a combination of street resurfacing as we typically utilize the block grant monies for, as well as replacement of some sewer inlets and ADA uh, handicapped ramps at uh, pedestrian ramps at intersections. Uh, it's a total of uh, this this year. Uh, I'll show you some pictures of the street section in question. This is Borough Line Road, which goes from DeKalb down to the Crow Creek. Uh, it is in that condition from DeKalb all the way down. It is uh, absolutely the 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 street that is in the worst condition in the borough at this point. Um, so that's a pretty lengthy stretch. It's uh, 1,250 feet, about 28 to 30 feet wide. Cost estimate of that is probably $100,000 right there. And then we have a combination of 35 uh, sewer inlets and ADA ramps that we are looking to do. 24 inlet boxes and 11 ADA ramps. And the Inlet boxes are in varying stages of degradation. Uh, you can see it's old mason work. A lot of uh, a lot of collapsing takes place. Uh, when the inlet boxes collapse, we you know it leaves it leaves these uh, these areas open for water infiltration to get up underneath roads, to get up underneath sidewalks, uh, causing permanent damage to the base. Uh, it obviously can create blockages in our sewer, which is obviously not, which is not good because you know, our sewers convey both sanitary and stormwater through there. So we need nice wide open inlets. Um, and in uh, the cases where we have inlets that are directly lo uh, located next to or within the, uh, an intersection that does not have an ADA ramp, which in this case there are 11, we are going to retrofit those uh, those intersections with ADA ramps as well. So um, the other uh, of the $370,000, about 100, 105 of it would be for Borough Line Road, and the other 260, 265 would be for the um, the inlets and ADA ramps. Mr. Truman, I, I texted you a few weeks ago about on uh, 9th and Bush, there's a sidewalk that I think needs to be accessible. So if we can just look at that when when you get a chance. Uh, would we, I, I would have to farm this out when we get it, right? Uh, the people who, I, I said before, Mr. Wayden, about the paving on front and second, people really like the job there. We might be using them again, I guess, a little bit again. Unfortunately, Mr. Heil, uh, it's publicly bid. So hopefully they would they would submit a bid and um, be successful. But please let them know. Like, it, we'll do. I, people don't normally comment positive or comment at all, but comment about the paving much. But we got really good comments on that. So if that's a quality of work we're going to get in the future, that's something I'd like to see. I've, I've heard the same thing, and uh, the neighbors on my block don't often have positive commentary for me either. But uh, everybody was happy with the paving, paving job. 
that's great news. I will certainly pass that on. Thank you. Uh, this is just a, uh, a, a project map showing the locations of all the inlets in question and Borough Line Road highlighted there uh, to the southwest corner of town. Questions regarding our uh, block grant application this year. Is there anything on that Borough Line Road stretch of paving? Uh, I mean, that's an area that's underwater pretty often at the bottom of that, isn't it? It certainly can be. The uh, those those culverts don't always hold the volume, and oftentimes the Crow Creek goes over Borough Line Road rather than under. During times of flood or heavy rain, yeah. However, we, you know, we are we are working actively uh, with our uh, neighboring municipality to uh, potentially come up with a solution to that problem, uh, installing new uh, new culvert piping underneath Crow Creek. Uh, we've noticed a little bit of an uptick in uh, in water vol in, in in sediment runoff and and, and water volume since the. Uh, the inception of that big Toll Brothers project on uh, the old Rossi Salvage Yard property, and hopefully uh, Toll Brothers, Bridgeport, and Upper Marion can uh, come up with a, uh, a mutually beneficial solution to that culvert situation down there. So with that, I would ask uh, Council to consider adopting uh, the, this resolution. I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution to authorize application. I'll second. We have a motion from Mr. Heil. It's seconded by Ms. Gundrum to authorize the application for the CDBG grant. Questions or comments from council or the public on that one? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, could you uh, come on up to the microphone? And uh, if you could, just state your name and address. Oh. Um, Scott on Prospect Street, Bridgeport. Um, can that CBD grant be used for alleyways as well? Because I wanted to talk about my alley a little bit today. Uh, Scott, it, it can, and, and in fact, it has. You know, we, we just did the paving, uh, which included Elm Alley, Cherry Alley, and Green, and por a portion of Greenfield, okay. and we uh, we applied uh, we applied block grant monies there. Now, dependent upon where you live in town, um, the borough, as small as it is, is actually broken into five separate census block groups, and each of those census block groups has a what's called an LMI index, low to moderate income index. Block grants are financial need based in, in, in issuance. And the block grant has to have an LMI index of 40% or greater. Two of our five block groups are ineligible because they are below that 40% threshold. So only 60% of the block groups in town are eligible for application for CDBG funding. If we wanna do any road work, Within those two ineligible, it comes out of borough coffers, but frankly, that happens all the time, so. Oh, okay, so it still could get done. All right, so maybe during the open session, I could bring up my specific issues? And if you could, for the record, please say and spell your last name. Oh, uh, Bowers, B-O-W-E-R-S. And, and your physical address? I know you said prospect. Uh, 400, 429. Thank you, sir. And, and yes, there'll be time for commentary, for public commentary, sure. And thanks for your question. Uh, other questions or comments on this matter before the vote? All right, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, that passes, thank you. All right, very good, thank you. Uh, next up, for council consideration, Ordinance 2023-3, amending Chapter 72-14 of Bridgeport Borough Code, uh, post-retirement spousal benefits. This is the ordinance we talked about in the past meeting. That is correct. What was the amendment that was made? My apologies, sir. I don't, I don't know if Ms. High was here because she was away for. Yeah, this, this was one we voted to advertise at our last meeting, and it, uh, it has to. Well, you know, I'll let Keith speak to it because I'll probably say it wrong. It is. We're, we're, we're obligated to. Uh, when we, recently, uh, we recently renegotiated the collective bargaining agreement between the borough and the Teamsters. Uh, a concession was made uh, for the Teamsters r related to their pension benefits and in order to uh, in order to formalize that and you know uh, 
tie up any loose ends, we also need to, in addition to adopting that new collective bargaining agreement, we need to change our pension code to reflect that change. And that's what we're doing here. Oh, I thought we did that already. Okay, I thought it wasn't. We voted. Amendment. We voted with ordinances. You have to vote to advertise, and then the, the the subsequent meeting or maybe two meetings later, you adopt then. So. Got it. Okay. So you, I think so I just you, missed a chunk of it there, yeah. but I understand. Yeah, I under, completely understood. You know what's up. So I'll, I'll make the motion to uh, pass the ordinance. Yeah, I'll second. The motion's from Mr. Heil, seconded by Mr. Fee, uh, to amend the Bridgeport Borough Code as regards to the post-retirement spousal benefits with the Teamsters. Um, questions or comments from council or the public? All right, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, that's unanimous, thank you. All right, thank you. And then moving on to unfinished business. Are there any members of council with unfinished business for this evening? All right, very good. Uh, <laughs> it sounds ominous. It sounds like an old Steven, uh, like a, St a Steven Seagal uh, movie from like '92, unfinished business, <laughs> with co-starring Keenan Ivory Wayans. Uh, committee reports. Any committee reports to share this evening? I'll just make an announcement for the uh, Sustainability Advisory Committee that uh, Saturday, April 22nd is the spring cleanup day. So I will just make this final announcement um, since this is the last council meeting before cleanup day. Uh, we will be meeting outside of Borough Hall in the uh, little plaza there uh, at 10 a.m. That, that Saturday, the 22nd. We'll have trash bags, gloves, and then we'll send everybody out on their way. And then we will have lunch afterwards around like 11.30 or 12-ish or so. So I hope uh, everybody in town can come on out and spruce up uh, town in time for spring. Um, that's it. Thank you, Councilwoman Nolan. Uh, any, uh, any other committee reports? All right, very good. Uh, seeing none, we can proceed to the mayor's report. Mayor Jack Sear. Thank you. Uh, first off, I did report last meeting that the Forest Street Cafe had just opened. Um, just want to report back that I was able to make a visit, and I was not disappointed. Their food is just as good as I remember from the Gateway location. So if you're a diner lover like I am, you need to make sure to give them your business. Your taste buds won't be disappointed. I don't know if anybody else has uh, made their way over yet, but I don't know. I enjoyed it. The Crab Benedict I had on Friday was delightful. As expected. Uh, next, the Bridgeport Pet Fair is still on for this Saturday, April 15th, from 1 to 3 p.m. in the parking lot next to Borough Hall. Um, there's going to be vendors for educational purposes and also those to just buy fun pet-oriented products from. There will be adoptable dogs from the Brandywine Valley SPCA and adoptable cats from Pals that you can meet and apply to take home. There will be a 50-50 raffle directly supporting the SPCA. You can get your face painted like an animal by our very own council person, Amy High. And in addition to that, there will also be two competitions for Bridgeport's dogs. Um, please bring your dog down on a leash and have them compete for best trick. Or if you want to dress them up, um, there will be a best costume contest as well. And the possible rain should hold out through the event, so just make sure to stop by and have some fun. And if you didn't hear, the Bridgeport Upper Marion Little League season opener will also be taking place on Saturday. And this is earlier in the day at 10 a.m. at the, their field up at Bridgeport Memorial Park. Um, I apparently have the honor of throwing the first pitch, so uh, you can come and enjoy that. Um, and also come and enjoy with cheering on all the community kids who will be participating in both t-ball and baseball this year, because everybody's welcome. Um, finally, please join me at my monthly office hours on Saturday, April 29th from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. in my office on the first floor of Borough Hall. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. So, Mayor, you're telling me I can show up at this pet fair on Saturday and go home with a new dog? I think that's the legal way of how it works, so that I'm not going to promise anything. That's but. pretty cool. Yeah. And what are the hours on the pet fair again? It's 1 to 3. 1 to 3. Thank you. Yep, thank you. 
be good. Mm-hmm. Thank you again, Mayor Jack Sear. Uh, Does your wife know she's getting a new dog this weekend, Keith? Uh, only if she watches this, which, <laughs> which means no. <laughs> um, Chief Chief Red is not here, so we can move beyond the uh, Chief's report. And just uh, I always like to do this for the record. Chief Red did let us all know he's on vacation. He's not just a no show. He's uh, he's on vacation. He's shopping for new dogs. Um, <laughs> A new business. Are there any items of new business for uh, members of council or the mayor to uh, discuss or bring up this evening? Um, Mr. Bello, now it was brought to my attention that there's new fireworks legislation from the state. Would we, if you, if it makes any sense to look into whether there's anything else we can do to ban fireworks in town, at some point, let us know. I'll be happy to look at the ordinance. I was talking to Miss Nolan, and she was really much, uh, she was very much involved with wanting to get rid of fireworks in town. So I don't want to take all of her credit, but just want to make sure we don't forget that. All right, thank you, Vice President Heil. Any other items of new business? Moving on to open forum and announcements. Uh, any announcements from members of council this evening? Are we? Um Soliciting applications for the Dr. Moralia scholarship? We are. That just opened up. Thank you. Good, uh, good reminder, President Schenck. Uh, uh, this year's round of the, of the uh, Dr. Moralia scholarship just recently opened. Uh, applications are due back by, oh gosh. Please go to the website or the Bridgeport Borough Facebook page. And you will uh, you, and go under news on uh, bridgeportborough.org. And one of the more recent um, headlines under news will be all the information you need uh, if you are a, uh, a college-bound senior graduating from high school or if you are a non-traditional student who is looking to go back to college or trade school for a uh, graduate or undergraduate degree. Uh, it is open to uh, anybody. It's not just for high school seniors. Um, but yes, go on to uh, the official borough Facebook page and or bridgeportborough.org and you can find the application as well as uh, the rules and uh, guidelines. And that is due by May 3rd. Thank you. I do actually have one other thing. Um, Mr. Truman actually sent out uh, an email to those on the borough's email list, I guess it is, um, which if you're not on it, you should be on it and you can sign up on the borough's website. Um, the Founders Day Committee has a, a feedback survey going right now. So if you have any thoughts on how this year's Founders Day event went, um, how, what you'd like to see in coming years, or if you want to get involved, um, that should be in your email. If not, you can check out the borough's website and fill it out from the link there. That would be very helpful feedback for the committee. Thank you. All right, thank you again, Mayor. All right, seeing no further announcements, we can move on to public comment. Are there any members of the public that wish to uh, step forward and speak this evening? Thank you, Council. Um, Scott Bowers again. So um, <clears throat> I, um, we've been having an issue in the alley behind um, my house. I brought some pictures, but they, they might be kind of small for you guys to see. But uh, the alley behind the house is Apple Alley, and it goes down to Cherry Alley. The water drains down in that direction towards Cherry Alley. Um, so for me, being on this side, the far side of the alley, the water seems to run in an organized fashion along the back side. But on our side, it runs uh, only on the near side upstream from our property and right about where our property is it tends to cross over so there's no crown in the alley i don't know if there ever was it's an older alley as you know the borough is and so the general uh problem is that the water kind of tends to just kind of run and cover this whole area behind our house where all the cars travel and this picture here was taken December 23rd, and you can see it's just kind of wet after some sort of precipitation that we had at that time. But what you'll find for some reason is that it continues for days, and by the 27th of December, the entire alley was just a sheet of ice. 
I don't know where the water originates from. I don't know if it's surface water, ground water, or whatever, but it seems to originate from a point just out of the frame above the properties in this vicinity, I'm not sure. So I guess it's running down and then it kind of pulls or maybe it pulls from the ground and it just constantly flows. Like even when there's no precipitation, there's always water here. And in the winter, it's treacherous and then every spring, it's a minefield. So public works has come down and they come down all the time and they fix the potholes, but they just reopen all the time and it's just, um, very um, irregular. It's much worse than the picture you had earlier. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, access to that. <laughs> but um, so I wanted to know if it'd be possible, maybe uh, if the borough can um, authorize maybe the township engineer, the borough engineer, to maybe look at it and maybe come up with maybe a solution of some sort. Um, the, um, like I said, the, the um, the problem with the, the ice is probably the most concerning. Oh, at some point, because we've been here for quite a while, at some point they have even uh, resurfaced the whole alleyway, but it lasted like one season in our spot. The rest of the alley doesn't look too bad, but that spot seems to be the worst of, um, of the alley. And so it's, you know, I'm not sure what, I don't know if maybe a drain needs to get put in or some sort of way to uh, direct the water Oh, I wanted to also point out that, not just for myself, but others in the area, uh, will notice every winter that we have this sheet of ice directly beneath, behind our houses. And as it progresses all the way to the end of Apple Alley and starts to go down Cherry Alley, then it crosses Cherry Alley, and there's usually a sheet of ice right there. And that's even worse, because it's very steep going down Cherry Alley. So I don't know if it can be captured or directed or somehow collected but it's, it's really quite a problem. It's been like that for many years. Mr. Truman, are you familiar with the, the water, that specific water issue? I, I know that uh, <clears throat> within the last couple of weeks, we had public works go out and, uh, and patch the potholes there. Um, yeah, I'm happy, to, I'm happy to go out and, uh, and take a look with, uh, with our public works lead foreman tomorrow or in the next, in the next few days at the very least yeah, and, uh, and see what kind of solutions we can come up with. That would be most helpful. Um, and and it, it would probably be helpful to view it post uh, some sort of precipitation. It's always better to catch it after a rainstorm. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yeah, not necessarily immediately, but it does, like I said, it continues for some time thereafter. Um, so it almost, and I don't want to make assumptions, but it almost sounds like maybe somebody's sump pump is pumping out into the alley. I kind of thought of that possibly, yeah, because it just kind of is always there. I'm like, it's not raining. I don't know where the water is coming from. Well, I, I remember another issue on a different street because obviously there's a few very hilly streets and just the angle of the properties where it was flat for that property just let water come down. And it was not an issue that seemed apparent at the time that the house was there. And so it, it could be something that's a very innocent problem, but that accumulates over time because the people up there, they don't experience a problem you do. We just had a bad storm at the beginning of the month. Did that make things worse? Because you were talking about um, winter, but we've had some major rainstorms, and that leaves a lot of water for a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, post any precipitation, usually... Can, the trickle continues for several days. And it's really not too much of an issue in the summer, except then what happens is after the winter and the potholes open, then they fill up with water for days, and then every car that goes by covers our cars with mud because they just keep splashing the water. Now, it's odd that you know what's happened in that alley, as probably most alleys, is most lawns now are paved with driveways. <laughs> so all driveways have been added and it certainly doesn't help. But that spot right there is one of the few that actually has grass. So maybe the grass is absorbed in what little bit of water it is and it, you know, maybe it just disperses it over time because it's like the only lawn that's kind of left there. I'm not sure. But yeah, it's just, I don't have a solution. I just have um, uh, been witnessing it and I don't know, you know, why it exists or what could be done. I just was hoping that someone could look at it. If I may, Mr. President, just a couple of questions. Sure. Um, is it, how long have you lived there, sir? About 30, 
two years. Okay, so you, you, I think you can answer the next question. Has it been that way the whole time, or is it something relatively new? You know, it's kind of been like that the whole time, but I think it's worsening because there's more runoff. You know, everything is paved now. All those lawns that used to be there are all now, are all now driveways. Like, mm -hmm. I would say 80% of them are driveways now. Okay. Typical alleys in the borough are not crowned. Mm. Tick Typically, they're convex, you know, they're, mm -hmm. the, the, instead of having a crown, they run things off to curb lines, which right. alleys don't have. Right. They're sloped the other way so that the runoff goes down the middle of them. And uh, I'm not, I, I don't, I, I know the borough very well. I don't know this area specifically. Right. If Mr. Truman needs me to take a look at it, I'd be happy to do that. But that, uh, what you described probably would help it because it wants to behave like a crowned road, but it's not. So it kind of runs along what would be a gutter on our side. But of course, right be, you know, at our house and our immediate neighbors is where it wants to go to the other side. So it sheets all the way across like that whole area kind of sporadically. Oh, I, should I be leaving these pictures? I left them, I brought them to, you know, to give you. Probably. You, you certainly may. Sure, Scott, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind taking a look at those, sir. Yeah. I kind of put them. And, and just one last question, if I, if I may. Uh, thank you. Is it, did, did you notice that it's worse recently? And, and can you tie that to any specific event, you know, that you could, that makes sense to you? Um, hmm. Let me ask, do you have any opinion on this? If you notice, I, I have to say personally, I, I, it seems like it's always been this way, but it seems uh, a little, how would I say? It seems to, the, the period of time seems to have gotten longer. Like it used to be for a day or two. Now it's three or four days that it's just running. Mm -hmm. Like where is this water coming from? I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a result of the problem. Well, yeah. thank you for coming out and letting us know. We'll, uh, Scott, you said four. Take a look at it. Sorry, sorry, President. 429 Prospect? Yes, please. Okay. We'll. We'll be out there in the next few days. Thank you so very much for your consideration. You got I must, it. I must say, the people who do come out and, and repair it, they're, they're very professional, very nice, and, and you guys are terrific in that regard. But I felt bad for him. I said, you know, I, I feel bad you have to come here every other couple of weeks or so. Maybe they can look at it. And he said, well, go to the council meeting and let them know. I was like, okay, well, that's why I'm here. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Elaine. It's the right thing to do. We do appreciate you coming out. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other comments this evening? Excuse me. <clears throat> yes, John. Hi, uh, John Gundrum, Going Bridge Food Together. Um, regarding the the cleanup weekend, a um, couple places I've been walking around town and all, and one thing I notice is uh, the trail now. When you're going from Frosty Falls, you go across the railroad bridge, and I noticed on that bridge in the whole trail right there is covered with um, street dirt. So that very fine, you know, that gets kicked up and it's probably, if you took a dustpan and brush, probably could collect 20 pounds of it. <laughs> but it, it's kind of, you know, ugly to look at and it's first thing I noticed when I started <laughs> doing the walks along there. And also um, if, I, I believe you guys go down to the Rotundo Park as well, so in preparation for the first market, you know, we can. And I, I do have a dustpan and brush in my cleanup supply kit. <laughs> if you are volunteering to to do that, oh yeah, I'm, I'm um. perfectly fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> but no, if you if any you notice any specific spots that I would have, then that helps me, you know, break up assignments for people. So okay, thank you. And I will be happy to pass along to the county that. Uh, they need they need to be, they need to begin the routine af previously discussed routine maintenance that ah. is part and parcel to this project. Yeah. Well, there's there's plenty of uh, debris there. Thank you. Thanks, John. All righty. Any other comments? All right. Seeing none, council could certainly entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right, everybody. It is eight eleven. We are adjourned. Thank you for coming out. <laughs>